And so Nehemiah's request was to two people. Firstly, Nehemiah's request was to God. He said in verse 11, Listen, Lord, and act. He said, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. And then after praying to God in chapter 2, we see Nehemiah's request to the king. And I really love that we see in, in this passage right at the start, when the king said, what is it you want? Nehemiah said, I prayed. And then I answered. You know, sometimes God just needs us to pray. What do I want? Give me the words. And he answers and the words come. And so Nehemiah's request to the king laid out these requests. Send me to Judah to rebuild the city. Now, Artaxerxes might have gone, hang on a minute. I don't want you to be your own selves again. I like having control over you. But he said, okay, go, build the walls. Nehemiah asked him to grant us safety. He asked for letters to get him safely through the territories without being captured or killed. And he asked for supplies. He said, and may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates and the, of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because of the gracious hand of my God being on me, the king granted my requests. Wow. And not just his requests. It said he gave him cavalry to keep him safe. So what about us? What do we ask for? Well, we ask God to prepare us. People-wise and building-wise. People-wise in our hearts. Building-wise in making sure that the building is safe and ready to receive more people. You see, God has been good to us. Through a donation and then through the COVID payments that have come from our government, we've been able to fix our roof, replace the bathroom in the resident for residence for our tenants, and all of the pipes that were so severely leaking and causing mould. To put new floor coverings upstairs, to do the things we did in our working bee yesterday, and to fix our tank, which is happening soon. We also ask, though, for unsaved people. We ask God to give us opportunities to reach out to this community, to make ourselves known. And in December, we're going to hold a carols evening. In January, we're going to hold a kids' holiday program. And it's all part of our discipleship pathway, making gateways into our church family for people to come. Are you asking God for people? Are you asking God for people? And from the problem or the need to the response to the request, they all lead to action. You see, your return to restoration firstly comes through repentance. The restored person or relationship or church won't look the same because it won't be the same. Repentance changes us. I shared that earlier and from my devotions. And our repentance also changes others. And repentance leads to action, doing something. And the simple action is for us to go. You see, God answered Nehemiah's prayers with provisions from the king. We see this in verses 8 and 9 that we read earlier. Because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my requests, so I went to the governors of the trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. Nehemiah couldn't just ask for this stuff. He had to go. There was an action on his behalf, and there's more that we'll see over the coming weeks. 
See, God answered his prayers. And God answers our prayers. God has placed us right here for a reason. Right in the middle of Burnside where there are estates going up all around us. He's placed us here for a reason. Our problem or need isn't to be like we used to be, but to be who God wants us to be now. And so our response, like Nehemiah, should always be to pray. Pray with prayers of adoration and remembering who God is, remembering what he's done. Pray with prayers of confession and repentance. Repent of any sin that has come to your attention in your life. And ask God for his forgiveness. Pray with prayers of expectation and faith and trust. Make our requests to God for all that we need to accomplish his purpose of salvation and discipleship in this place, in this community. And then set our hands and our feet into action. There's a world. There's a community. There's a neighbour out there who has not heard the gospel yet. Or maybe they've heard it and never taken it in, but will when you tell them again. Or will when you share your testimony of just what God has been doing in your life. Let's go. And let's change our world for God. And that's the song we're finishing with today. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are a good God, a loving God, a God who keeps his promises, a God who wants to equip us to reach out to the unreached, unsaved, to reach out to those who are hurting, to invite them to come to a place of healing. To reach out to a world that is so against you they don't see their need for you. So Father, give us hands and feet to go. To be who you want us to be now, not who we used to be. To reach out with the gospel. To tell people that they can be saved by Jesus Christ and discipled. Let us change our world for you, but do it with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we conclude our service today, we're going to sing the great song, We're Out to Change Our World for God, also known as the Battle Hymn of the Republic. So... Uh, the words that you receive in this pre-recorded service will be slightly different to the words we sing here in church, but let's sing them anyway. <laughs>